This is the Come A Girl Daily Podcast, written by Stephanie Bond. October 24th, Monday. I think your father has lost his mind. He put a punching bag in the garage, and all he does is spar and do push-ups. He's eaten grilled chicken every two hours. I caught him flexing and posing in our bathroom mirror. Oh, brother, is this what he meant by fixing things with Keith Young, getting buff and roughing him up? Really, Dad? On what planet and in what time machine? It gets worse, my mom said, her voice breaking up. He got a tattoo on his shoulder. A tattoo? Then he tore the sleeves off all his T-shirts. Sigh. Maybe it's just a generic midlife crisis. And he's listening to hip-hop music. That's not bad. That's just weird. Wait a minute. Why do you have a San Antonio Spurs hat on your bed rail? Why are you asking the girl in the coma questions? Never mind. I told him I cannot deal with this right now. I have too much on my plate. I'm worried sick about you. I'm worried sick about the baby. And my job is so demanding. The last thing I need is for him to change. Except only for my entire life, my mother has been begging and pleading with my dad to change. I'm not kidding, Marigold. I'm hanging on by a very thin thread. She gasped for air in a wheezing breath. I I can't breathe. Mom hit the nurse call button. She wheezed. Marigold, I can't breathe. Hit the nurse call button. She wheezed. Marigold, I can't breathe. Seriously, Mom, is this a trick? Are you trying to get me to wake up to hit the nurse call button for you? I heard the squeak of a mattress and realized with mortification she had climbed into the bed that had been wheeled into the ward in preparation for a new patient. In between the wheezing, I heard flailing, then the ping of the nurse call button. Several seconds passed before the door opened because the veggies don't press call buttons. Ms. Kemp? Are you okay? She wheezed. A panic. Another wheeze. Attack. A flurry of activity followed to administer oxygen and plier with Xanax. Within a few minutes, she was chatting and laughing, enjoying the attention and the promise of a prescription. I am mentally shaking my head. Only my mother could find a way to upstage her comatose daughter. On a deeper level, though, I'm worried about my parents. They seem to be spinning off into their own orbits, and I sincerely hope my dad doesn't confess to mom what he confessed to me. I have a feeling my mother will not be quite as forgiving or forgetting, because my mother has never done anything illegal or immoral in her life. Ever. That I know of. It's Stephanie again. What do you think will happen next in the Coma Girl Daily Podcast? Be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss a single episode of this six-month saga. And check the show notes for more information about Coma Girl eBooks and the complete audiobook, plus links to other serials I've written. Thank you for joining the Coma Girl Party. This is going to be so fun.